Hey everyone, it is the Storming Dragon here and it is 9.21 in the morning and I am not awake for en enough for this, but here we go, we are doing this anyways. Um, so sorry this tutorial took so long to get out. This is now my sixth attempt at recording, so I just haven't felt comfortable with any of the takes, but this is the final take I will be doing, so whether it's good or not, <laughs> you guys are getting this one. This video will be split into two parts because it, this is a step-by-step -step walkthrough. I'm going to be drawing as if you're drawing with me. With that said, uh, grab some paper and some pencils. Um, let us begin drawing, right? Yep, like I said, this is going to be... This is part one of two parts because it's gonna, these are going to go long, just to warn you. And so before we dive in, I just want to do some... Um, say some words. So. This first part is going to be me showing you and walking you through master copying and like actually researching boxes and studying their anatomy and stuff so they look realistic and believable. So when I say realistic and stuff, I'm going to show you how to draw them like we see at a wolf right here. This is realistic. And you're probably thinking, that's not realistic, that's a cartoon. Well, actually, there's uh, a lot of people get mixed up with naturalism and realistic and like realism and such so naturalism would be more art like this whereas not like realistic and believable would be stuff ranging from the art that i just showed you to the one we see in front of us which is adwolf because what makes something realistic is its believability so this is realistic because the portions and anatomy are correct and believable. You can tell that looks like a fox and his legs aren't bent backwards or like anything like that. You believe that this is a natural character. And of course, you can emphasize some characteristics to make them stand out more and to just make them more emphasized and cartoony and uh, stylized looking. But in actuality, you got to make it believable for the audience to appeal to it. All right. Um, and with, with that all said, uh, let's dive in, shall we? So the first thing I want to talk about is some basic traits that we see between foxes and wolves, because I feel though foxes and wolves get confused a lot or drawn very similar when they they, they are in some degrees, but in other aspects, there's some key features that a fox has that a, and a wolf have that define them. So right now we're going to be looking for those key features that makes a fox a fox and that define, defines that animal from other animals in the kingdom, well, from nature. Uh, something a lot of people get my foxes confused with wolves, especially my older art, which is fine because that's just and the younger artist of me. I want to show some body comparisons between a wolf and a fox. So for starters, with the body, and this is this is master copying right here. This is a this is a study. So what you can do for studies is this is not tracing. It looks like it is, but it is not. I'm studying the features of the animal and the anatomy and breaking down the parts of the animal and the limbs and such like that into sh simple shapes that I can then repeat later and just re keep on repeating those shapes. Do not take these sketches that you uh, trace over a picture or whatnot and finish them off. That, that, no, do not do that. These are just for research only. So hopefully you guys understood that. And what you could do is you don't have to have a fancy program like I do, what you can do is you can take a piece of paper, tip it up to like pull up a picture on your computer's monitor of a fox and then tape a piece of paper to that monitor and with a pencil, don't use a sharpie or anything else that will end badly, use a pencil and just do the shapes, find the shapes of the animal. Something that I see right off the bat with, uh, between foxes and wolves is that their shoulders are not level with their hips. Whereas wolves, their shoulders and hips are level. Foxes' hips are elevated more. Um, they have that hip in the air more, kind of similar to raccoons, but not as drastic, I would say. I 
Then another thing that we see right off the bat is that foxes' shoulder blades stick out more than here wool. So that's also something to keep in mind that foxes' shoulders stick out more like uh, felines or the big cats family, whereas wolves are have that shoulder blade tucked in more a bit. It's it's hidden and covered by layers and layers of fur. And then here's another strong difference between the two is fox's tails are the same length as their body. If you can kind of see that, they have really long fluffy tails. And then wolf, their tails are a little more on the short side. They're about as long as their stomach. Now that we got some key features of the body, out of the way the differences let's go over to the face so something i do want to point out is that a lot of people um don't understand this especially younger artists uh, me i didn't get this until later on predators or carnivorous omnivorous uh type animals actually have a more oval skull and like narrow narrower narrower skull compared to prey or herbivoric uh, type of animals. They have a more circular. Some, some animals do break this law and this rule and stuff, but for most, this is a sufficient law. With that, I'm gonna show you over here. You can definitely see it with the wolf that the head doesn't follow the circle. It doesn't go like this. It goes like this. It's an oval. Same over here. It doesn't follow a circle. It goes like this. It's an oval. Differences between a fox and a wolf. Head headwise. I think their heads their heads are pretty similar. There are some key differences. So for one, a wolf muzzle is thicker, whereas a fox's muzzle is thinner, more pointed, and fox uh, and wolves are more box-like with their muzzles, is how I like to think about it. Whereas foxes are more cone, sorry, that's a horrible drawing, are more cone-like. Hopefully those help you see their differences. Foxes' eyes are also bigger compared to their head, whereas wolves' eyes are more normal. And then another feature that we can see right off the bat is that foxes' ears are bigger, longer, than a wolf's compared to their head. I know you're probably thinking, hey, they're about the same size back to back here, but no, like I'm talking about proportionate to their head, to their face. You gotta look at it that way instead of the size that you see on the screen. The last difference uh, that I show in my wolves and my foxes and stuff is wolves with their uh, cheek and jawline, well, not jawline, but Kind of, yeah, with their cheek, we're just gonna call it their cheek line. With their cheek line, their fur, it, it tends to go down past it and onto the, onto its neck. I don't know if you can see that. There's a line there that the fur follows. Each fur on individual animals have their own path and like certain parts of that animal have different fur patterns and lengths and stuff like that. So wolves, it continues to its neck. With foxes, it actually, my eyes, go dips in. They don't have any continue, it doesn't continue. The pa fur pattern of the cheek ends here. So that's more of a triangle. You're gonna see a similar shape in um, foxes. So with wolves, to me, that shape is a box or an ugly, wonky rectangle. And then with foxes, this shape is a triangle or a wonky looking cone. Here. Yeah, but you get it. Foxes are triangles, wolves are boxes. Now, of course, when you're doing a character, you can do with shape language uh, differently. I want to just dive right into actual foxes instead of just the wolf differences. We took a look at the body, so I'm not gonna talk more about too much of the fox body. Something to keep in mind is that foxes have vast um, 
I believe the term is subspecies within the fox family. Uh, and then there's some of them that are actually cut into a different category where some are actually true foxes and then others aren't true foxes. I haven't looked into that much that I just found that out recently. Like red foxes are true foxes, but gray foxes are actually not true foxes. So we're going to count them as foxes because <laughs> yeah. Something to note about foxes' behavior, they belong in the canine family. However, their the characteristics, like uh, the behavioral mannerisms that they do, are more feline-like. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're creating characters or stories regarding foxes. Uh, that's something I also messed up when I was younger, is I made them more canine, can, canine acting rather than feline acting. So every animal has their own mannerisms that you need to observe. When you're telling a story, either through writing, animation, or just illustration. With the fox's body, we can see that their knee is level, or not level, but it does not go past their stomach. They have a very high knee. Oh my god, it reminds me of that chicken a <laughs> bit. And then over here, as we can see, their elbow, is barely lower so i would say that their elbow is about even with their stomach hopefully you guys can see through my weird sketches a difference between the fennec fox body and a red fox is that these guys are closer to the ground and these guys are not these guys' legs are shorter in proportion to their body whereas these guys' legs are proportionate to their body you gotta really study the species of fox that you're looking at, that you're wanting to draw. Now, to me, their biggest differences are their face. As you can tell right off the bat that a fennec fox actually has more of a prey-like head, where it's more circular, whereas the fox is more uh, oval-like. And their snouts, their muzzles are shorter, Whereas um, the ro normal red fox is longer. And these guys are a bit more petite too. And then their eyes are pretty big in proportion to their head. And then as we can see, their cheek fur droops down instead of just a triangle. And then of course, longer whiskers than the normal fox. And finally, the most obvious feature difference is these big, long satellite dishes of an ear in comparison to their face and a normal fox's. Study the animal that you're drawing. And this can work for anything, just not foxes. It can work for master copying, can work for humans, cats, dogs, fish, like any animal you're struggling, struggling with drawing and humans. Try this method see how that helps you. Try it multiple times. All right, so now let's do stylized and then that will be it for this part of the video. We have here some uh, pictures I got, some um, famous characters that we've seen in our childhood and some artists and stuff that I think really understand what I'm trying to get at with uh, understanding what makes the fox the fox and really pushing those features. So we're gonna go over here to Nick Wilde, these are some concepts, um, sketches of him I found on the internet. So as we can see, they that got that oval shape for him for his head. I'm gonna turn this down a bit. And then they got that cone of a nose. They got that triangle of his cheek fur that doesn't carry out. They cut it off from his neck fur. Like we can see it's right here and then they did another one for that neck. And then of course those big pointy ears up here with odd. They did the same thing. They took the key features that makes a fox a fox and emphasized them. And this time we're gonna look at the body. They have his, his stomach is like right about there. They have his elbow is leveled with the stomach and so is the pit of the arm not the armpit but the pit of your uh, forearm and the thing that the joint <laughs> the pit of the joint then 
knee is a little bit lower, but that's, once again, that's because he's not on level ground. But something that this drawing does show is that his tail is indeed the same length as his body. We got that big old longy, longy, fluffy tail. <laughs> All right, so jumping over here to, this is, this guy's proportions are probably more accurate. Um, this is by Aaron Arplays. Um, he does a lot of tutorials and live streams and stuff. Um, he's a really good artist. And so we can see that he emphasized the crap out of that tail, the crap out of those ears, made that triangle, that thin cone-like nose. He just pushed that until it broke. And that's another thing with uh, stylizing characters and animals and such is you can push it until it breaks, until it no longer looks like that animal. And then you back up a bit and then you continue. Once again, we can see those elbows are um, even with their stomach. And then we got that tail once more. And then over here, I just want to point out that uh, this is Disney's Robin Hood. Um, Robin, they just took those main features of Fox and implemented them to this character. Pointy, cone, pointy, long, big ear, and fluffy tail. That is it for this portion of the live, not live stream, sorry. <laughs> this portion of the tutorial, how to draw foxes. I hope that this was uh, helpful and that you learned something. And if nothing else, that you just learned that Stormy is a horrible teacher. Sorry that this ran wrong. It is a step-by-step. -step. So, and you guys know how I talk and how I struggle talking. So you knew what you were getting yourself into when you clicked. However, I am so grateful that you guys took my advice and stuff. I hope it helped in any way or form. I will see you in the next part. I love you all, but not in a weird way.